If you've ever had the feeling that you can't do something, you're not good enough, or if you suffer a phobia, you're not alone. In fact, all of us have moments of self-doubt. Psychologist Anthony Gunn has just written a beautiful little book about facing fears. He uses an interesting tool to help people do this. And Anthony and Gus have come in for a chat. Anthony, hello. Hello, Georgia. Let's talk about Gus first off. He is just beautiful. Now, I haven't got a phobia or a fear of snakes, but I think I'm in the mon minority, aren't I? And it's interesting you say that it kicks in about age two? That's correct. So, yeah, have a feel. How do you He's think you feel? It's just beautiful. Well, you're going to tell me that most people are scared because they think they feel slimy. Yeah, aren't you? spot on, yeah. spot on. So the, the, the actual fear kicks in about two years of age. Yep. Prior to that, little babies wouldn't be scared of a snake at all. So they'll actually yeah. try and chew on them or, or play with them. And then after that, we start developing a fear of them. So we're actually predisposed to fear snakes. Yep. So. And so why you use gas and spiders, which yes. I do have a <laughs> massive fear of. Very common. How do you do that? Yeah, well, basically, a person has the same fear reaction to this as they would, say, public speaking or trying something new. So by being able to, to manage their fear when handling a snake allows them to handle it in the real situation. So that means you've actually got to face your fears. Is that the well theory? Well, truly. Yep, spot okay. on. Okay. Let's, um, let's go. I'm going to... I might give him back to yeah, you. Yeah, certainly. Thank you. <sighs> let's go back to the beginning because you had a phobia yourself. Yes, that's Which great. you had to face and which ended up actually starting this whole thing of becoming a psychologist and helping other people. Tell me yes. what happened. Well, I was an exchange student over in Honduras. So it's a third world country very close to Mexico. And I ended up having a collapsed lung. And so I was operated on emergency operation. I was given about 30 seconds to live. And so they operated on me without anaesthetic. Just had two female nurses holding me down. Absolutely terrifying. Was... For anybody, I think that would have developed, would oh. have triggered a phobia <laughs> in anyone, I think. Well and truly. Yeah. I was operated on another two times there. Eventually I was rescued by a, my own private jet. It was a, a medical team. Had my own doctor, two nurses, four pilots, my own private jet. I was eventually flown back to Australia, operated on for the fourth and final time in Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. And from here, I developed a, a phobia, or sorry, an intense fear of medical procedures. Mm. And if I'd get a needle, I'd just pass out. Yep. And so this led me to, to want to find out how to treat it. So yep. my reason for becoming a psychologist wasn't to help other people as such, but to help myself. Yep. Okay. What's the difference between a fear and a phobia? Is a phobia just a bigger fear? Yeah. The thing with a phobia is it's way out of proportion to the actual risk. So it's totally irrational. And the person actually knows that too, that it is totally irrational. So for example, some people say have a phobia of snakes, like of Gus, won't even be able to have a look at a picture of them. Or mm. if they see them on TV, That's they'll look away. That's me and spiders. Yeah, spot yeah. on. Great, great. <laughs> So what's the best way then to overcome a fear or a phobia? Well, it's all about taking baby steps and facing your fear in gradual, gradual steps, at feeling like you're in control the whole time. So I'll just bring Gus back yeah. here. <laughs> and though in our society we're taught to, to face a fear head on, just mm. face it and you'll be right, which is probably the worst thing you can do. Yeah. It's all about taking small steps and facing that fear in gradual amounts so you feel in control. So how did you do that with, the, with your fear of all things medical and hospitals? Yeah, well, once again, taking small steps. So, for example, the needle, I used to pass out if the needle came near me. So it was taking small steps by handling the needle, uh, just knowing what it was all about, and then slowly having the, uh, the, the needle inserted, so to speak, and then going to hospitals, but approaching it in small, gradual steps the whole time. What about with children? Children tend to be nervous about things, perhaps they even, even have phobias. I would imagine the worst thing you could do is belittle a fear, even uh, if it's something really silly. Yeah, this, this actually happens a lot with adults too. We belittle each other for, for having fears and that's why we try to keep our fears to ourselves because we feel embarrassed about it. Now with children, their fears develop oh, probably or they develop at all different ages and that's, they'll also outgrow them very quickly too. So for a phobia, they have to actually have that, that fear of the intense of the one object for at least six months before it's classed as a phobia. Do people, I mean, your fear or phobia was triggered by a certain event. Yes. Are people born with fears and phobias? I mean, you've said that we, it's inbuilt in us to fear snakes. Yes, yeah. all phobias are learned. So no one's ever bought, born with a fear. And phobias are learned generally through direct experience, but it can also be learned through, uh, say, watching television. Uh, say, for example, Jaws was a great one for developing mm. fear of sharks, arachnophobia for spiders, uh, the birds for, for bird phobia. So it's uh, even uh, September 11 was unfortunately a good one for, for children developing phobias of, of terrorism. 
And is it possible? It is possible to overcome them. Oh, most certainly. Yeah. All phobias are learned, therefore they can all be unlearned too, which yeah. is great news. All right, that's good. Thank you, Anthony. Congratulations on the book. It's oh, it's wonderful, you. and it's been good to meet you and Gus. Thank you very much, Georgia.